The other day I was looking for a basic level Adobe animation tutorial. All the tutorials I found assume you either know a bit about Animate or are comfortable with other Adobe drawing products. I had no prior experience with Animate and other Adobe products like Photoshop or Illustrator. So those tutorials were difficult for me to follow, and I have decided to make this beginner-friendly tutorial. I will talk about absolute basics and how to create animation using Animate CC. Following this tutorial will save you at least a week of learning. You can purchase Adobe Animate either through Adobe Creative Cloud Apps or only Adobe Animate. After installing Animate, you may see a screen like this. In this opening window, Animate suggests some hands-on tutorials. I tried to follow a couple of these, but these are very advanced. Once you know the basics of Animate, then you can go for these tutorials. I will skip these tutorials and create a new animation from scratch. Click on Create New button to create a new animate. You will create a new stage or canvas from here. You have to specify the width and height of the stage from here. The term stage means the area where your drawing and animation will happen. There are some predefined presets here which differ in width and height. There are other options to set, like frame rate and platform type. The default frame rate and platform type are OK at the beginning. There are different types of presets suitable for social media sharing or gaming purposes, and the changes are mainly in the width and height of the stage. I will use the default HD preset, a good enough configuration for making YouTube videos. The white rectangle you see is called the stage and the drawings and animations will happen on stage. You can adjust the viewing area of the stage from the dropdown. It is up to you how much of the stage you want to see. You can zoom in and out of the stage as you need. Sometimes you will see the scroll bar to scroll the stage. There are some buttons at the top of the stage to rotate or grab to move it around. There is also a center stage button to take the stage to the center. When you are new to animate, you have to explore these things a bit to be comfortable with the software usage. Fit to window is a good size to display the stage as the whole stage can be seen, and I will know exactly where I am putting an object. There is no scroll bar beside the stage, meaning I am seeing the whole stage. Besides the stage, you see other toolbars or windows. These windows can be toggled on or off by clicking the tiny arrows beside them. If you need more space for the stage, especially on smaller screens, you can hide these toolbars when not required. You can go to the window menu and see which ones are active with a check mark beside it. For animation, the main window is the timeline. It is at the bottom of the stage. I will get back into the details of the timeline in a bit. You can modify the properties of anything you put into the stage. Dock means the stage itself, and these tabs will be highlighted based on what is selected. You can work with assets or colors and many more things, which will make sense when adding something to the stage. As I said previously, the most important concept to learn in animation is the timeline. Currently, I am in the first frame of the timeline. At the one second mark, we see the 30th frame. If you recall the create new animation settings, I had 30 frames per second. The animation concept is you will have changes from frame to frame, and all those 30 frames will be shown in one second. This way, we will feel things are moving in the animation. But in reality, it is different images in different frames. All these frames are currently empty, and the currently selected frame number will be shown here. I have only one frame in this timeline, and soon I will create other frames. These tools help to draw objects on the stage. If you mouse over a tool, a tooltip will appear to denote what it does. Sometimes multiple tools are combined in a tool which you can see by right-clicking on the tool. For example, this rectangle tool also has an oval tool in it. When you need to draw an oval-shaped element, select the oval tool instead of the rectangle. There is a different kinds of brushes that assist in the drawing. You can use the mouse, touchpad, or drawing tablet pen to draw something with brushes. Every tool has a different kind of configuration. For example, the brush tool has a pressure sensitivity toggle button. Though I am not able to show you the pressure sensitivity as I am using the touchpad to draw. But the line will be thicker or thinner based on how hard you press the pen on a drawing tablet. To delete something from the stage, change your mouse pointer to the selection tool. You can then drag and delete the items in the stage. 
As you will be using different tools at times, it is important to switch to the selection tool when necessary. I will draw a rectangle on the first frame. Select the rectangle tool and click on the frame in the timeline where you want the drawing to appear. You see, on the right side, the frame tab got selected as I selected a frame in the timeline. If I switch to the selection tool and select the stage, the dot tab will be selected from the right side. Different selections will have different settings to configure, so you should be aware of what is currently selected. I will draw a rectangle on the first frame. So I have to select the first frame on the timeline. Select the rectangle tool and draw a rectangle on the stage. The rectangle is green because the fill color is green. If I change the fill color and draw another rectangle, it will get this new color. So the fill color fills the area of the drawing, and the stroke color adds a border around that drawing. It is black with stroke size 1, creating a thin border around the rectangle. You can increase the stroke size and check how it looks. If you want to see the outline of your drawings, you can do that from the layer panel. Either you can show outlines from all layers or choose a particular layer. The layer is another important concept in Animate and any other drawing software. You can stack multiple layers, the top layer is closest to you on the screen. I will get back to layers soon. I will only animate the green rectangle, so deleting the other one. You will have more than one way to do the same things in Animate. For example, the fill color and stroke color can also be selected from here. You can reset the colors to black and white from this button. The three dots above reveal all the tools not fitting in this toolbar. If you are looking for a tool but not finding that, look for that here. Clicking on the layer name will highlight all the objects in that layer. In layer 1, I have only the rectangle, so it is highlighted with some dashed lines. Ideally, every object you wish to animate should be on a separate layer. I have only one object now, and that is on layer 1. If I click on the rectangle, the object tab is highlighted on the right side and we can see some properties of the rectangle object. Why is this object selection important? Because to animate any object in Adobe Animate, you have to convert it to symbols. As a beginner, it can be difficult to understand what a symbol is in Animate. Just remember, before animating anything using Animate, it would be needed to convert into symbols. Otherwise, Animate will not be able to add any animation to that element. Give the symbol a name and choose the type as graphic. Other symbol type can be movie clip or button which I will not cover in this tutorial. Once it is converted to a symbol, we can see that information in the object tab. I named the symbol rect, which we can see here. Object properties like width or height or position can be changed here. To prevent any accidental changes, you can lock the values. All the symbols of your project will be listed in library. We can see the rect symbol appearing here. I will make a simple animation of this rectangle moving here. Currently, all these frames in the timeline are empty, and two types of frames can fill this. Right-click on an empty frame, and you can insert either a frame or a keyframe. A keyframe is a frame where we have some changes in the drawing. You can also insert a keyframe or a frame from these icons. As I said earlier, there are multiple ways to do the same thing in Animate. When you insert a frame, all the frames after the keyframe will have the same content as the keyframe. A keyframe has a small black dot inside it. So you see, all these frames have the same content as the first keyframe. I want the animation to be one second long, so I will insert a keyframe at the one second mark. All the frames in keyframe now has the same content. I will reposition the rectangle in the second keyframe. The last keyframe has the rectangle at a different position from all the other frames. In frame-by-frame -frame animation, I had to draw a rectangle in every frame. But I will be using tweened animation, and I will need to draw only a few frames. Animate will draw or interpolate the frames in between. Tween animation is faster and easier to implement as we do not have to draw every frame. Select any frame between the keyframes and right-click. Two kinds of tween are available for the rectangle element, classic and motion tween. In this tutorial, I will show classic tween. You can also use the buttons here to add tween animation. 
As I said, there are multiple ways to do the same thing in Animate and choose the way you feel comfortable with. As I created Classic Tween, two things happened. The rectangle moved to a new position for the selected frame, and in the timeline an arrow appeared. All the frames inside the arrow got a new position for the rectangle. I specified the positions of the rectangle in the keyframes only. Animate calculates all the new positions in other tween frames. You can click the play button or press enter to see the animation. This is a very simple animation, but once you know these basics and can do this on your own, you are on the correct path to becoming an amazing animator. It is possible to make animation longer just by dragging the keyframe. I have made this animation 2 seconds long by dragging the last keyframe to 2 second frame position. It is possible to insert new keyframes in between. Remember, when you make changes to a frame, it becomes a keyframe. I took the rectangle down a bit and a new keyframe has been created. The classic tween animation has been applied automatically because I made the changes in the already applied tween animation frame. The new animation follows a new path as I added that keyframe. You can add as many keyframes in between as you want to fine tune your animation. Though for this kind of path animation, motion tween is the preferred option. I will talk about other types of tween animations in another video to keep this tutorial focused on absolute basics. Sometimes animate creates some symbols on its own, and you can check the library to find those. For this animation, no new symbol was added by animate, but keep this point in mind. Also, check the properties in this panel to see what options are available. It seems too much at first, but it will become simple as you explore things. Let's now add another object and animate that element also. I will change the rectangle tool to an oval tool. Right click and select the oval tool or press keyboard shortcut O. You can change the fill color using the color palette. Changing from any of these two places has the same effect and the change will reflect in both places. I will select this red like color using the color dropper. You can drag it to get the kind of shape you want. Though I made a mistake by adding the circle to the last frame. Also, separate animated elements should be on different layers. Because if I try to delete the circle, both objects get deleted. So I will undo the changes by Command Z and get to the animation with a rectangle only. It is very important to put separate objects in separate layer and the frame selection also need to be right. I will add a new layer by clicking this plus icon. You can rename the layers to understand better which element is on which layer. I will add the circle in the circle layer. It is also important to select the correct frame of that layer in the timeline where you will add your drawing. I will add the circle in the first frame of the circle layer, so I will click on that frame. If you want to hide the contents of a layer, click on the eye icon. To prevent accidental changes click on the lock icon. Even though we are not seeing the rectangle, it is there but hidden. I will select the first frame of the circle and select the oval tool. I want to move the oval from right to left, so adding this on the right side. After adding the oval, the next step would be to convert it into a symbol. Even if you forget to convert to a symbol, Animate will ask you to do that. The next step would be to define a keyframe. Either I can right-click on a frame and make that a keyframe, or I can change the object on a frame. Making any changes will convert it to a keyframe automatically. I have made circle's position change in the one-second frame, so the circle animation will be shorter than the rectangle animation. Right-click on any frame in between and create a classic tween. The circle's movement will now be in animation. After the last keyframe in the circle, the circle will be there for the remaining frames. If you want to make the circle disappear after the animation, you can select and delete all the frames after the keyframe. If you want the circle to be seen in the last position, just create a frame at the end. All the frames after the keyframe will have the circle. I will show the contents of the rectangle layer so both elements will be seen. Playing animation will show the animation according to the duration you set in the timeline. It is a very simple animation, but these concepts are absolutely necessary for complex animations. I now have a white background, but if I add an image as a background, the animation will get a professional look. 
you can add a background from assets. You can use either a custom background or the backgrounds available on Animate. For this tutorial, I will use a background from Animate. Besides the background, you can use characters or props, but I will keep things simple. Choose a background that you like and drag it to the stage. You will not need to create a layer before adding a background, as it creates its own layer. I am on the last frame, so we do not see the background. I will rename the background layer, which is added as the top layer. The top layer will hide the elements from the bottom layer, so the background must be dragged to the bottom. I will hide all the layers except the background and position them correctly. Instead of dragging and resizing, I can make the changes quickly from properties. I will make the width and height the same as the stage so that it covers the whole area. I will set the X and Y position to zero to make the background centered. I can now show all the layers, and everything will appear on the stage. There is a problem as the background only appears in the first frame. Other frames will have an old white background. I have to insert another frame at the last position to fix it. The animation will now look much better with a simple addition of this background. Though it is a simple animation, if you can do it correctly, you will learn the most basic and necessary concepts of animate. After making an animation, the next step will be to share it somewhere. You can export it and get a file to share. You can either get an MP4 or a GIF that suits your need. The publishing process will do some of its own encodings, but finally, you will get a file to share. I get the export successful message, and it is in my documents folder. It can be run as a video file, and all the animations I did in Animate is here. Start with this simple animation, and I will keep posting some Animate tutorials. Please check the description for any links to another Animate tutorial. Thanks for watching, and let me know what kind of animation tutorial you are looking for.